welcome to this new Aphantasia clip. I wasn't sure what to call this, so I'm going to call it Aphantasia 101. It's really just an introduction to what is it. Because so many people, and I mean a lot of people have come to the discussion this year really through a meme or something similar. And I just wanted to share a simplistic version of what is it? What is this thing that we're talking about? So it's the inability to visualize in your mind. And it's characterized by it being voluntary. So many people have said, well, hold on a minute. Can you visualize when you're asleep? Can you visualize if you take drugs and other things? But the key would be is, is it a voluntary visualization? So if you want to think of a pink elephant, you should be able to think of a pink elephant. I'm not saying you get something, but it isn't what you asked for. You've got to want to have that image that you're looking at or you're thinking about. So it's very much characterized that. So that's how it splits between, okay, I'm, I'm, I've got aphantasia, but I can have it images when I'm asleep, which I can do, but these are not images that are voluntary for me. I don't create those images. They are created for me by my mind. So they're non-voluntary. The bit we're talking about is the voluntary part. Now, if we take that as an ideal, aphantasia means not being able to create the voluntary imagery. Now that means it's about 2% of the population, which I think is the figure that most people use as the, the norm now. Um, now at the other end of a spectrum, because this is a spectrum, is 23, 22% of people with hyperphantasia. So they can create pretty much anything in their mind visually and manipulate it or do what they want to do with it in terms of maneuvering it, manipulation, reconstruction, change anything. So that leaves 75% of the population somewhere along the remaining middle bit of the spectrum. The curious thing is, I don't really think anyone knows the distribution of that part of the population. So we don't know whether people are mainly clustered at one end of the spectrum at the, with the aphantasia or the other end. We really don't know. It could be in, evenly distributed, distributed, excuse me. Um, we don't really know, and I, if anyone's got any figures or facts to back up what they think it could be, I'd be really interested because I've not seen anything. And I'm not even sure how much of the population you'd have to interview for that to be something that we are available to say with certainty. Now, I've mentioned before I'm going to do a, a documentary on Aphantasia, and that is one of the questions we're going to bring up in that documentary is, what did the distribution of the population look like along the visual spectrum? Now for this video clip, this YouTube clip, I'm very much just gonna focus on the visual sensory experience because I wanted to keep it simple. And also I wanna leave the door open to do the other four as well, the four main ones. So we can talk about those in similar detail. But that's where it is. So that's really Aphantasia 101. Um, if you've got any thoughts or questions, Reply to this YouTube um, clip by all means, or write to me on Twitter or Facebook if you're in, in one of the groups, or just generally write to me if I'm if you see me online on one of the social media feeds I, I write on. But I am curious to think to know what other people think because it very much is a. I think when you start with thinking about the conditions, very much forms the ideas that you initially have. But I was surprised at the range and the scope of what people could have. And I think that's the bit that we really need to um, think about a bit more for those that are discovering this. Because I'm pretty certain, I'm, I spoke to, I don't know, 50 to 100 people in real life with aphantasia. And I'm pretty sure we're all having a unique condition, experiencing the condition. Now, I don't think we're having a unique perception of the condition. 
I think we are actually having a unique experience. I think it is actually different. It's manifestly different for us. It's not just our interpretation of it. It is different. But how different and why it's different are things which I don't really understand or know yet, but I want to learn more. So hence why I often do these clips and have lots of questions and not answers. Sometimes I know more, sometimes I have not an idea of how this is going to turn out, but I want to discover it anyway. So this is one of those I want to discover more on. So hopefully you're going to have a think about it, share your own thoughts and ideas and see what people think. So thanks for watching.